Hello you guys, my name is Kaylin, and in this short experiment we are going to learn um, how polar and non-polar molecules can interact just using the simple ingredients of a 2% milk. This is 1%, but 2% would work better for the experiment. Dish soap, food coloring, clean q-tips, and then paper plates. In this case, I have a glass plate. The whole point of this experiment is for you guys to be able to actually visually see what is happening when um, when polar molecules and then non-polarized molecules mix together. So for example, in the milk, there's going to be a lot of non-polarized molecules. There is also polar as well. And the same goes for the soap, food coloring. So the whole point is to just see kind of what happens. And you guys can feel free to gather these things and do them at home along with me. But I will show you how to do it. So first you take your plate and then you get your milk and you want to just fill enough milk so that the bottom covers and about a fourth of an inch of milk is there. That's good enough. Now you're going to want to let the milk sit for just about two minutes so while that's doing it. Okay, so next we're just going to place our food coloring. You just want to drop a bunch of little drops towards the center. Kind of make them so they're touching each other as well. Put some blue there and some blue there. Kind of a big plate, so I'm going to put a bunch of food coloring. Ah! Don't drop the lids or let the cats get it. Got some red. It's the only thing I'm ever going to use food coloring for, so I'm just going to go at it. Yellow. Whatever. And now some green. Oh man, these cats just don't want to go in. Okay. I have no idea how pretty this is. I haven't done this in years. So first things first, um, we got the food coloring ready. And if you're doing this with kids, or you might be doing it right now if you're following along with me, first ask the kid what they think will happen when they just put a plain dry Q-tip in the middle. And then once they have their answer, let them try it. Oh look, nothing happened. <laughs> so I just went on to the Q-tip. And now, ask them what they think will happen after the dish soap is applied to the tip of the Q-tip. So we're just going to put a few drops, oh, too many drops. Make sure it's just kind of covered with soap. Alright, now it's supposed to be the cool part. We'll see if I did this right. And you just take the Q-tip and you put it in the center. Look, nothing happened. Tell your kids to learn how to read labels because this is not the right milk. This is 50% less fat, so therefore there's no fat for the polarized uh, molecules in the soap to cling onto. So that was no fun whatsoever. All right, I will be right back. I'm gonna go get the right milk. Don't okay, I'm back. I got my milk. So we are gonna try this one more time. Same as before. You're just pouring in. That was better. Milk to cover the bottom of the plate. Hey! Cats are being annoying. Alright. Let the milk settle. Okay. So we're gonna replace our food coloring. This is much better. <laughs> Some yellow slash orange. I don't know what it is. What do I need? Red. Right and blue. Alright, so same thing. Just ask them what they think. So, like, what do you think will happen when you put this dry Q-tip in the center? And then they give the answer, and then you say, okay, find out. And they do it, and that's supposed to happen, I swear. <laughs> and nothing happens. So then you ask them, hey, what do you guys think will happen when we put it in the dish soap? And I forgot my dish soap, so what dish soap is acquired. So you dip the end of the Q-tip in the soap. Da-da-da-da-da. Like so, 
and then just place it in the center. And that is exactly what should happen. <laughs> I don't know, when I was a kid, I just thought it was cool because I like all the colors. So maybe the same will happen when or if I do this experiment in class. And it's still going. So you can see it's kind of like a little tie-dye effect. Still going. And it also it says that the higher fat content in the milk that you use will actually have a longer lasting effect on this. So if you use like whole milk, then the colors maybe would go for 30 seconds versus however many seconds it goes now. Or if you use skim milk, you'd have a relatively bo boring or dull. <laughs> it's still going. This is crazy. Let's just see how long it goes. Little white spot right there. So, uh, at this point, you can ask the kid, it's kind of a hard age because they have to have some knowledge on the polar and nonpolar molecules, but you can ask them why they think this happened and see where their knowledge takes them. Wow, this looks so cool, I just can't stop. I'm sorry. Okay, I need to force myself to stop. All right, so this, <laughs> my laptop, is our finishing product, and it's still going with the Q-tip that it dropped into the plate. Awesome. <laughs> All right, you can see it's still going, but while it's doing that, I am gonna go over just kind of what happened and why it happened during the experiment. Um, so milk contains milk fat, which can be like super sensitive to changes in its surroundings. So by adding the soap, the soap was the main thing um, that kind of set off the experiment. <clears throat> okay, so when the soap is added, the non-polar parts of the soap uh, go and collect all of the non-polar parts of the milk fat. And at the same time as it's doing that, the polar surface and the soap connects with the polar molecules in the milk fat. So it causes kind of that separation and the spreading to the end and then the... <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you learned something from my clumsiness and unpreparedness from this experiment. And I hope that um, when conducting the experiment with the kids, the kids have just as much fun doing it as I did. And hopefully they make less of a mess with their food coloring and everything. And hopefully you guys buy the right milk the first time. Thank you.